Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sanchen, I'm a psychiatry trainee in the UK. And on today's video, I'm gonna be taking you along with me on a 12 hour night shift in a psychiatric hospital. It's about 7.45 now, so that means I've got about a half an hour to actually get out of bed, get ready and leave. So let's just get right down to it. Just got to work a little bit early, so let me explain exactly how our psychiatry has to show on calls work. Because the hospital I work in is so big and it caters to such a large number of patients, we usually have two psychiatry SHOs on call at any one time. The wards are split between two different briefs, with each of us carrying one of them. If you want to find out a little bit more, I've done a, a video before on how these on calls work, so just give that a watch. We'll link it up there somewhere. Right, so enough dilly dallying. We've got about 10 minutes to the start of the shift. Let's go. I make my way to the junior doctor's office, which is where our handover takes place. As you can see here, this is our office. Now I know it's not the most glamorous place to have a handover, but it serves its purpose. So we've just finished handover guys, and there's a couple of jobs that have been handed over, but nothing too strenuous, and we should be able to get through the jobs pretty quickly. So the first job is there's a gentleman on one of the wards who's complaining of some pain in his legs. We just need to go see him, find out exactly what's going on, and if there's anything that we need to do overnight. Another job is that a new patient was admitted this evening, and as part of their admission workup, they have a set of bloods done. So we just need to chase these results and find out if any of the blood bloods are deranged, and if they are, then investigate them or treat them. And the final job is a 12 hour seclusion review for one of the gentlemen on one of the wards, and that's at 11 p.m. So hopefully we should get the first two jobs done and then have time for the seclusion review and just pick up jobs as and when they come in between. So I realised now that I'm editing the video, I never really explained what seclusion was. So I thought, while I'm editing it, I'll take a bit of a second to just explain exactly what seclusion is, because I'm sure a lot of you haven't had that much input with seclusion and may be a bit confused about exactly what it means. Seclusion refers to the supervised confinement and isolation of a patient away from other patients in an area that they're not actually allowed to leave. The sole aim of seclusion is the containment of severely disturbed behaviour that is likely to cause harm to other people. Now this could be patients on the ward or it could be staff as well. By putting a patient in seclusion, it allows us to separate them away from other people that they may be likely to harm. It also allows us to administer medications and also monitor their behaviour to see signs of improvement in a more controlled environment. Putting a patient in seclusion is a very difficult decision and it's never taken lightly. It's something that's always the last resort it's when there's nothing else we can do to keep everyone else safe i hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into what seclusion is so let's get back to the vlog after seeing the patient in seclusion i chased the blood results for the new patient that had been admitted prior to my shift the blood show an increased white cell count which is indicative of an infection so i go to examine this patient just to see if i can identify where the infection could be coming from the patient's female and she's been having some burning sensations when passing urine so we do a urine dip which confirms that she has a urinary tract infection for which i prescribe some antibiotics it's about 2am now guys, we've got through all of the jobs, there's nothing remaining to do, none of the nursing staff contacts us from any of the wards. So for now it seems like a lot of the patients have probably gone to sleep, so there probably won't be that many more jobs to do tonight. Obviously if any of the patients become unwell or if there are new patients admitted, the nursing staff will just bleep us and we'll be here available to go and see see to those jobs and when they're needed. So for those of you who don't know what a bleep is, this is what I mean by a bleep. It's a little electronic device that the nursing staff can contact us on if they need us for any reason. It's a bit of a primitive technology, I'm not gonna lie. I think they've been using these for quite a few decades now. Bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing, I think. Just gonna take this time to have a little bit of a break, maybe have a bit of a bite to eat and get on with some revision maybe, because I've got an exam coming up in March. Might be good to start making some headway some, with some revision for that. After a quick bite to eat, I get a bleep from one of the male wards informing me that a patient had just been admitted. When a new patient comes onto a ward, there are a few standard things that we need to do for all of them. 
Firstly, we need to do something called a clerking. This essentially involves taking a detailed history from the patient about why they've come in and we need to gather some details about what's led them to this point in their life. Next, we also need to carry out a physical examination, take some bloods and do an ECG. These are important for all psychiatric patients so that we can rule out any organic causes or any physical health causes for their mental health problems. This particular patient had been admitted due to them experiencing low mood and then having thoughts of ending their life. They had been treated at home for a number of weeks at this point, however their mental state had continued to deteriorate, leading to them being admitted into hospital as they were a high risk of causing harm to themselves. Seeing this patient takes me about an hour and takes another 30 odd minutes to document everything that I've done. This leads me about 5 o'clock in the morning, after which I'm lucky enough to get some rest. Overall, that was a pretty standard night shift in my hospital. Because there are two doctors on call together, the workload gets shared pretty equally. The next hospital I'm going to, from February, only has one doctor on call at any one time. But it's a small hospital, so it'll be interesting to see what the on calls are like in comparison to here. If you've liked this vlog and you'd like to see more, please leave a comment down below and thank you for watching.